So one of the biggest controversies we get asked about all the time, how can you actually palpate the psoas muscle? Well, if you want my hot take on it, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So for me to give you the best detailed and most reasoned answer, the best way to do this is through our anatomy model. So guys, the anatomy will tell us the real story and why ultimately I don't think it's possible to truly and accurately palpate this muscle. Here's why. First of all, if we swing over to the right hand side of the body, the first thing that we actually have to get through is the skin. And then we have a, an array of huge muscles that we have to get round to get to the psoas. So the first one is the external oblique muscle. Really powerful part of our abdominal muscles. And not only do we have an external oblique, but we also have an internal oblique underneath it. Then underneath the internal oblique, we also have the transversus abdominis muscle. And then you also have to make sure that you're not palpating too anteriorly because that's where we have the rectus abdominis muscle. So you've got all these big abdominal muscles in the first couple of layers. And you may hear some practitioners saying, no, 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 it's absolutely fine. What we do is we put the patient in side lying and we just move those muscles out of the way and then we get into the psoas. Or no, no, it's fine. We put them in supine. We just move those things out of the way. Well, you physically can't. Notice how all of these muscles, first of all, the external oblique runs all the way around the thorax. You can't move it out of the way. You then have the internal oblique which also runs all the way around the thorax and then underneath it you have the transversus abdominis muscle which is the same. How can you just move these things out the way in order to get to the psoas? It's just not possible. So even after we've removed the external oblique, the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis, this is when we now get our first glimpse of the psoas major and it really is a glimpse. There's really not much room to maneuver to get it wrong or to get it right if you're really trying to palpate this muscle. And we have to be so perfect in our accuracy of where we're putting our hands that we're not palpating the inguinal ligament, as you can see here, or the ascending colon, as you can see here, which is actually a really big structure. We're going to have to make sure we definitely miss that. And then Maybe then, once we've somehow divided through those major abdominal muscles and we've perfectly moved the digestive organs out of the way with pinpoint accuracy, might we actually be able to find the psoas major? And so, as you can see, unless you have a sat nav target or a surgeon's scalpel that you can use to magically wade your way through all that tissue with absolute precision, I would argue it's not possible to palpate the psoas muscle. Okay, okay, okay. Why do I get so worked up about this? Well, ultimately, it's then why a practitioner wants to palpate the psoas muscle, which is commonly because they want to release it. This is one of those things that I really do dislike about physio, where practitioners feel like they have to overly sell themselves and get their patient to come back and see them again and again and again in order to release the psoas muscle. Well, judging by the anatomy, how on earth can we release it? It's far too deep. You've got all these muscles in the way. You've got all these internal digestive organs in the way. How can you exert so much force that you can actually release it? And how do you know that you're not just massaging the abdominal muscles? For me, it needs calling out. So I do think it needs to be highlighted. If you're working with a clinician who says that they're palpating or releasing the psoas muscle, ask them how. Ask them how the anatomy structure works. Ask them how they're able to get so much force deep enough without pressing on other structures that they're definitely on the psoas muscle. I do think it's one of those things that we need to get real about. I don't think you can palpate it. I don't think you can release it. And frankly, I don't think you need to either. And hey, if you do want some tips on how to palpate around the hip, check out our video above for our hip palpation tutorial. 
So guys, hope you found this interesting. Hope the anatomy has really painted a picture there. If you'd like more from us, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, check us out on Instagram at Clinical Physio, and we've got loads of resources on our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, see you soon here on Clinical Physio.